to think ahead, you know, to remove planlessness and have passed the PID into law, we probably would not be talking about what we're talking now. Because fundamentally, the PIB was supposed to be a procedural and a contractual document. Nobody will come into your domain and contract with you if there is no document spelling how, 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 out fiscal how come, responsibilities. How come we always talk about a way forward. Uh, it, now we'll come back to the PIB. You can also put that side by side with uh, the argument Malpet put side by side with uh, the uh, power company of Nigeria or the PHCN um, and now we have the discos, the transmission company into generation. Um, how come when we have what you call a roadmap or you have uh, an idea of how best to improve on maybe our energy sector, we don't seem to get it going. If you say the PIB should have put us on a better stead, I'm also talking about the PIB after so many years and even kicking against uh, a organization or a restructuring. Is that how we can progress as a people? You cannot progress if there is planlessness. If you have planlessness, you will only be creating economic, social, and political emergencies for yourself. Because if we had passed the, the petroleum industry bill into law, then that means there will have been a document that will be spelling out the fiscal responsibility of a will-be investor, the corporate social responsibilities of anybody. And when you have a document like that, you can be seated anywhere in this world. All you need to do is you probably Google it, or you call it up, or you get it electronically. Go through the terms, the conditions. This will be the tax regimes. This will be your corporate social responsibility regimes. This is how you are going to contract with the government, with the international oil companies, with local communities. And you will look at it and, and just ask yourself a basic question. Based on these conditions, can I go to Nigeria or can I go to country X to contract? As it is, That's what do, people as, do. As it stands, don't we have uh, documents spelling out all that? No, but because some of these documents are obsolete. It's just like when you go to the tax laws. You, in the tax laws, you will see yourself being asked to pay 5 kobo, 10 naira, 15 naira for certain things. While you know in, in practical terms today, probably you're supposed to, to pay 1,000 naira or 20 naira. Mm. So there is a need for the cleansing. I'm just wondering though, I mean, as a technocrat, from your understanding of what has happened, does it still, does it preclude the PIB or does it stop the PIB from being passed? Well, well, to a great extent, it's, it's very clear that uh, the PIB is almost being jettisoned. Because if not, you, you ask the question. You said, I, we need foreign direct investment. We want to be a continental hub. Mm -hmm. But you don't have a contracting document. What you have has regimes that are different. Because we, the House of Reps say the, how, the, the PIB, because it, be, it has to be presented again, uh, you know, we were, we're already in another way in the Eighth Assembly now. Yes. And so the document must be presented again if it wasn't passed in the last Assembly. They see they, it as a proposal now. They see it, you know, that it hasn't been given to them all over again. From what has been done, would we say that we don't need it, uh, you know, to be done again within the ambits of uh, the National Assembly? We need it. If, okay, if you don't pass it, if you don't have a law, like I said, how will you contract... The question we people like me keep asking is this. Why is it that we cannot pass the PIB? So the you PIB have... still needs to be passed? Yes, because as we speak today, the, what, what's really confusing today is mm -hmm. why can't the... Everybody is asking the question, why can't we pass the PIB? But, and, and when oh, oh, into law, and I, I can tell you, we have enough oil and gas engineers, mm -hmm. enough oil and gas lawyers, Enough oil and gas environmentalists, enough oil and gas accountants, mm -hmm. we enough oil and gas energy editors. And that simply means that 223 document can be dissected and atomized. The lawyers will look at the aspect that concerns the law. The engineers will look at the aspect that concerns engineering. The accountants, the economics will look at fiscal regimes. What we need to do, we look at this. So there is still plenty of room for legislation? Correct. Okay. You know, but the legislators but, must rely on the necessary people, the necessary yeah. brains, 
or technocrats in this case to do the work for them. Let me bring it back to the, the position where how we got to where we are. Uh, first and foremost, we understand that uh, NNPC workers are able to access their offices now. They're, su they're suggesting that it may have been called off. But in terms of what cost it in the first instance and yeah. how the minister has said, look, maybe the engagement wasn't enough. We're going to go back and talk to the people and see how it could progress. Where do you think this action will leave the people? Because if everyone identifies that, look, we need to at least reorganize and move forward. If he says it's not been unbundled, it's just reorganization. So does that then mean that he's got to go back and start all over again if he intends to unbundle the NNPC, such as going to the National Assembly, engaging with them, engaging with union? This may take a while. Well, generally, when, when you talk about planning and effective planning, a lot of people will not be there during the background work. But there is also a saying that if you are on the wrong track, even if you have gone a million miles, there is nothing wrong in coming back to start afresh. Like we said, if you look at it, Nigeria is, is, is bedeviled with, with, with all kinds of hydra-headed issues as far as that sector of the economy is concerned. We've said it already. We're, we're supposed to be lit like Qatar. We're supposed to have good refining capacity, just like the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And the way our NNPC is supposed to be managed, the way you manage Saudi Aramco. And if you have all, if, if, this, if this is among the reasons why our president visited, and I believe he visited with the Honorable Minister. So on their coming back, you know, the information they shared, the knowledge acquired, and the cross-fertilization, what we expected is that if you have something like this, then the necessary parties or stakeholders, because in this case now, I can't define one constituency as stakeholders to you. You know, the I.O. international oil companies can be seen as stakeholders. Nupen can be seen as stakeholders. Pengasen can be seen as stakeholders. But in national interest, you're supposed to sit down together. So when, the, when you make policy pronouncement to Nigerians, you know, we would want to see collectivity. We want to see congruency, not you know, dissenting you know, views. You, you, we're hoping that, that uh, because, uh, for instance, Pangasin, they're supposed to be on the program today, and uh, as well as Nupeng, we do hope that they still make it to the studios. When we say stakeholders, and we call the unions as stakeholders, uh, going by what has happened over the years, would you be comfortable calling the unions stakeholders? Uh, shouldn't we now be asking the question what has been their contribution to the industry i mean for instance if you're a teacher and we're talking about uh, bad education uh, insufficient knowledge from teachers onto the children who should you hold responsible sometimes you should hold the teachers so if you are uh, and now we should be looking towards nut as well because the teachers who can't give sufficient knowledge to my own child is a member of the nut the nut should be bothered about more knowledge for this teacher so that they can impart better knowledge to the children. Shouldn't we be looking towards that when it comes to some of these unions, for instance, Nupeng and Pangasin? Because as a Nigerian, I'm also a stakeholder and I should be asking the question, what has been the contribution of these unions to the betterment of that sector? A lot. And you see, when you will think they are not contributing if you skewed yourself to probably just NNPC. But when you talk about Pangasin, they exist in all the servicing companies, all the multinational companies. And at the end of the day, they are a congregation of the Nigerians that will move the Nigerian oil and gas industry forward. It still looks vague. When we say <laughs> moving it forward, uh, one would have loved to see some of these things. Uh, have they ever pushed for, for instance... Reforms? You're, yes, reforms. You're, sure. you're, you're not the only one that has come up to say that the PIB is fantastic. Has there been, uh, been any move, you know, to sponsor some of the bills that will make the sector better for the country from the unions? A lot. And let me tell you, when, when you talk about these unions also, the members of this union are actually disturbing the respective companies. They are the accountants. They are the lawyers. They are the petroleum engineers, they are the gas engineers, they are the pipeline engineers, they are the security managers. So at the end of the day, it's the congregation. But like we said, the common denominator is that nobody is happy that we cannot internally domesticate today. Nobody is happy that we are still importing 
we are suffering from exchange rate differential because of subsidy issues. Nobody is happy that you don't have fertilizer because you've not been able to diversify and use your gas, which, which, which ordinarily should be used to get ammonia, which is a raw material for gas. All right, since nobody's happy, we'll, we'll come back and take a look at what do we do to make people happy. And, uh, well, okay, well, we'll uh, move on with this one, but we'd we'll like to also put it out there that we uh, expect Francis Johnson, the president of Pegasin, he was confirmed for the program, he agreed to be on the program, but at the moment, we still await his presence in the studios. Well, Zaka Bala is a petroleum engineer. We're taking a look at uh, what's going on in that industry. You did say lots of people are not exactly happy, uh, especially, you say, because we need to reorganize and move forward about this one. But with respect particularly to the petroleum industry bill, which a lot of people expect and something should have happened with the 7th Assembly. And by the way, they did say that they were going to pass that before... Correct the assembly wound up that session, the seventh assembly, but it didn't happen. In fact, as far back as, as 2010, if I can remember, the then Minister for Petroleum, mm -hmm. when, when we had a World Energy Forum called OTC, Offshore Technology Conference, in, in, in Houston, Texas, I remember there was an announcement that the PIB was going to be passed before the end of 2010.